Today we're gonna do a camera comparison between a Samsung Galaxy S20 versus the iPhone 11. Sorry it's a bit windy now, but hopefully the sound is okay. And the S20 actually has a telephoto lens, so of course that's gonna be better in terms of zooming in. So this is a quick low light test of the front facing camera. I'm just in a city with under basic lighting conditions. So let's move on to the next section. Starting off with the portrait mode, my experience gotta be better on a Samsung S20. When you're shooting something with more of a complex shape, then the S20 is a definite winner here. Clear examples are the fingers. You can tell that my fingers are pretty much out of focus or it's just weird blotches on the iPhone. But on S20, it's a really clean cutout. The Samsung also gives you different focal lengths. So with the front facing camera, you can actually zoom out a little bit and the back camera, you can zoom in. On the iPhone 11, you only get one option. So the Samsung is more flexible, but what I do like about the iPhone 11 is the background blur. It's just more creamy and I think it looks better. But at the end of the day, I would prefer something with more better performance and flexibility. So the Samsung can use a telephoto lens to get that more compressed background like an actual portrait lens. Oh, and I would like to add low light performance and portrait mode on iPhone isn't too great as well. So for everyday situations, the Samsung S20 is going to be the winner here because it does have the telephoto lens. So if you find yourself zooming in a lot, then the S20 is going to be the better choice. But if you don't, then they're both really good phones. So it doesn't really matter at that point. Because when I'm looking at both the wide and ultra wide angle pictures, they're both sharp. They both got good HDR and color profile. With the colors, we do know that the Samsung is more saturated, whereas on iPhone is more flat. So it's a personal preference. But if you do zoom in, you notice that around 3x and 5x, you do notice that the S20 is sharper. The Samsung also has 30x. I don't know if it's really useful when you're taking pictures since it's kind of blurry, but I think it's just useful for seeing things from afar. For low light situations, I would say the ultra wide angle is not the best, so I would just stick with the wide. And to no surprise, as we zoom into 3x and 5x, the S20 still looks pretty clean, whereas on the iPhone, it's more digitized. Now once in a blue moon while I'm using a telephoto lens, on S20 it's a bit slow on the focusing. It doesn't happen all the time but luckily I caught it here. Now this is also a personal preference but during nighttime, since usually the Samsung photos are more contrasty, the blacks are more darker so it's more crushed, you may see less noise. Therefore it can end up being in a much more cleaner image. But also on iPhone, since the colors are more flatter, you can kind of see more detail and more of the image in the darker spots. So it really depends on what image you like. Moving on to night mode, you will see a big difference on both phones from regular camera to the night mode itself. But I just want to say in really dark pictures on the iPhone, it all kind of looks muddy. And just by looking at all these examples, it seems like the S20 does give a much more clear picture. But as for performance wise, while I'm using night mode and zooming in and out, definitely the iPhone is the winner. On S20, when I press the shutter button, you can actually feel and see how long it takes. But on iPhone, once you hit the shutter button, it just takes it. You don't feel anything at all. It's super quick. And when you switch to night mode, you can't just press the shutter button right away. You would have to wait until you see the seconds on your lower right. Then you know that the night mode is ready. So the performance on S20 in low light situations is not too great. Now moving on to video, both the colors and the clarity, they are really, really identical. For the stabilization, I would give it to the iPhone. If you look really closely, every harsh step I take, you can see the micro jitters on the S20. And for HDR, they both are so good. I would say the S20 is slightly better just by a little bit because if you look at the buildings on the left side, you can clearly see that it's it's brighter on S20. For the ultra wide angle lens, they both seem very similar in terms of stabilization, but to me, the iPhone seems to have a better control on the highlights. Now moving on to 4K60, even though the S20 is stabilized, it's still not that good. You can clearly see the micro jitters on each step I take. Also, you're stuck with the main camera lens. You can't use the ultra wide angle lens to shoot 4K60 like the iPhone. So one thing the S20 can do is shoot in 8K. You can tell that it's really cropped in, so that's one of the major downsides. And I noticed that if I'm doing too much panning or panning too quickly, the image starts to stutter a bit. It's still okay or still surprisingly good for 8K on a phone, but I wouldn't use this mode if I'm doing anything crazy or fast paced or doing anything with sports. And the stabilization on the 8K footage isn't too bad at all. I mean, it's still better than the 4K60 on S20. And for the colors, the Samsung seems to be more accurate. On iPhone, it seems to have like a slight greenish yellow hue. Now moving on to low light video, I would say the stabilization is a bit better on S20, but then you would see more micro jitters, which surprisingly, this is probably one of the best or clean footage on an Android. The iPhone still has the better highlight control. You can clearly see inside the store, whereas on the S20, it's kind of blown out. And for the noise levels, I can actually see more of it on S20 than the iPhone. So the cleaner video footage goes to the iPhone, 
but it still has that yellowish green hue to it. So for the color accuracy, it goes to the Samsung. For the ultra wide angle lens, they don't really perform that great in low light. But a lot of the traits I said before still applies to the ultra wide angle lenses. One big con I would like to add for the iPhone is that when I'm panning too much, you can actually see it stutter. And moving on to 4K60, is a no-brainer that the iPhone is the winner here. There's a lot of micro jitters on the S20. For 8K and low light, it seems like there's a really low shutter speed, so every time I'm panning around, the whole image is blurry. And on top of that, it gets even worse with the micro jitters. During the darker spots, you can see a lot of artifacts. It turns to this purplish color, and also there's a lot of noise. So if you're planning to shoot 8K, the best or safest way is to shoot it in daylight. So that is my comparison between the iPhone 11 and the Samsung Galaxy S20. I really enjoy the portrait mode on S20 as a better experience, as well as the colors. I feel like it's already ready to share on social media. But for performance, I gotta go with the iPhone, and of course for video as well, hands down that is the better video camera. So those are my thoughts, what are your opinions, what do you think which one is better or you would choose? If you are interested, I do have links down below. Please follow me on Instagram, give a like, subscribe, hit the bell, and thanks for watching.